So it turns out Elon Musk has decided to change the name of the SpaceX BFS, or Big Falcon Ship, to be called Starship, as well as mentioning that there's going to be some changes to the design. Now, as of recording this video, the new design hasn't been released yet, and therefore I'm going to be focusing on the current design, which has three large fins at the bottom and two smaller fins at the top. Now, SpaceX may or may not change the design of these fins in the upcoming design. However, what I want to do in this project is see how these fins control the attitude of the aircraft on its approach for landing. In last week's video, I went through the design of my radio-controlled Starship and briefly cut out some of the foam parts. This week, I'm going to hopefully finish the build of the Starship and we can get some test flying done. I started by covering all the foam board parts with packing tape to add some strength, as well as some appropriate black and white colouring to match the real Starship. The parts then slotted together using the 3D printed motor mount as a jig. I had originally planned to glue these three fins together in the middle, however tape seemed to do the job and would also allow me to remove the fin for repair when it crashes. I then attached the three 120 degree pie section pieces, which will not only hold the foam board sheets at exactly 120 degrees apart, but will also act as a lip from which the fuselage tube will mount to. It was then time to start mounting the electronics, starting with the servos, which will control the thrust vectoring vanes. The flight controller, which contains the gyros and accelerometers for stabilizing this craft, was then mounted to the top of the three foam board fins using a 3D printed part. Also, the servos I bought came with overly long wires, so although this looks like a wiring nightmare, it's actually far less complex than you might think. So let's plug in the battery and check everything is working. I first moved it around to check that the flight controller was correcting for my movements and then check that my control inputs are working. Notice how the pitch control moves both the thrust vectoring fins and the large rear fins. Also notice that the thrust vectoring fins can tilt to produce a spiral vortex of thrust. This will be used to counteract the torque produced by the motor and therefore prevent the craft from spinning out of control. Also, I set up a switch which would shift the neutral position of the large rear fins. This way it should allow me to test more of a range of angles for pitch control during descent. I think this is probably a good time to test that the thrust vectoring stability control is working. Or perhaps not. I mounted the foam fuselage tube to the bottom fins which allowed me to mount the battery higher up. This would increase the distance between the centre of mass and the point at which the thrust vectoring force is produced. Essentially increasing the amount of control authority. At this point, I was trying to tune the PID values in the flight controller, but later realised that the issue was actually related to the large fins at the bottom. As soon as the craft starts moving sideways, or there is a gust of wind, the fins produce more sideways drag than the fuselage tube, therefore tipping the craft into the wind. And because the thrust vectoring isn't strong enough to counteract this, it keeps tilting until it crashes. Because the previous fuselage tube wasn't very round, I decided to remake it with half of it covered in black packing tape to match the actual Starship colour scheme and tried bending it into a tube slowly, with no success. So making many folds in the foam seemed to be the only way to get it to bend. This could then be slotted over the fins and be taped into position. I then cut out the small front fins, covered them in black packing tape and mounted them to the pre-painted 3D printed nose cone. Then because my workbench is relatively close to the roof of my shed, I took it outside for a quick assembly and it was finally ready for some proper test flights. Now I was quite nervous about testing this thing because it's not the strongest thing I've ever built due to it needing to be quite lightweight. Plus this was the only day this week where it wasn't really windy and raining, so repairs weren't really an option. All cameras rolling and lift off. What happened here was the same as what was happening when I was testing without the nose cone. However, it was slightly less violent. Fortunately, the nose cone just popped off and with a bit of tape, it was good to go again. So on the second flight, I increased the throttle more, which would therefore increase the amount of control I had from the thrust vectoring fins. I also folded the rear fins back to reduce the amount of drag produced at the bottom of the craft, and this seemed to help massively. With the fins folded back, they acted like dihedral on a plane and helped to stabilise the roll of the craft. 
This allowed me to stay in control and hover it around pointing belly first into the oncoming air. I increased the throttle to gain some altitude and attempted an approach descent. Let's see that again. As soon as I switch off the throttle, the craft spins rapidly to the left and I lose complete control until I increase the thrust again. Now what I think is happening here is that if the fins aren't at the exact same angle, it essentially becomes a falling propeller and wants to spin around. So for example, if you were to raise the front right fin and the rear left fin, it will basically cause the whole Starship to yaw around towards the left. And this could possibly be the way that SpaceX are aiming to control the yaw axis of the Starship on descent for landing. So now, instead of testing it with a zero throttle glide, I'm going to descend with a small amount of thrust. The real Starship won't use any thrust until the absolute final landing stage, but it also has a much higher horizontal momentum due to its orbital velocity. And this model just drops vertically when I stop the throttle due to its high drag and low mass. This method seemed to be far more controllable right up until the final part before landing where I deploy the fins to the landing position. This again produces a lot of sideways drag at the bottom of the Starship and therefore causes it to tip into the oncoming wind. So I went back around for another approach. Now that was a close call, but what happened? When the Starship is descending belly first, the fins can be hinged back and forth to change their angle of attack to the oncoming air. But the issue arises when the Starship is angled directly nose first into the oncoming air. To control the craft, the fins must now rotate in this axis to change their angle of attack. But the Starship is unable to do this and will therefore have no aerodynamic control. The next couple of flights weren't too different as I was just practicing the approach and landing. Although the final flight did make me realize how important these fins are to the control of the craft. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. So yeah, the, um, the push rod control horn has just come loose. If you can see right there the flap can move uh, and this is just hanging loose uh, i didn't have any glue with me so i've just taped it and that obviously wasn't strong enough um this side seem still seems good um so just losing control of one of these flaps pretty much um ruins all control of the aircraft or the rocket should i say i guess i'll take it back in check all the servers are okay and then um if the weather's still good the wind hasn't picked up too much Guess we'll try again. Whilst the glue was drying on the rocket, I reviewed the simulation that SpaceX had made of the Starship's atmospheric entry and landing phase. And what I noticed is that it enters the atmosphere at a really shallow angle to slowly bleed off its velocity, like the majority of spacecrafts do. And it keeps facing belly first until it has no more horizontal velocity. At this point, it is traveling at about Mach 0.25 and folds the large rear fins back to reduce drag at the rear. This pitches the craft and it begins to accelerate to Mach 0.3 before firing up the rockets to decelerate and finally moving the rear fins back to the 120 degree spacing for landing. So what I want to try and do is replicate the final landing phase which is falling at a steep angle and folds the rear fins just before landing to bring it to the vertical position. Then unfold the fins and perform a landing. The craft was a bit unstable with a slightly steeper approach but the issue was mostly with the final rotation just before landing. Now I have no idea where the centre of mass will be on the actual Starship, and this is probably the issue here. For it to self-right itself to the vertical position just before landing, it might need a centre of mass to be further towards the rear. Therefore the front fins can act like fins on a dart and point the craft rockets first. However, on this model, because the front fins aren't adjustable, having a further rear centre of mass will make the craft unflyable on descent. So what I think SpaceX does is they have the centre of mass really far back and have the small front fins folded back for the majority of the descent. This way the centre of pressure is balanced with the centre of mass and when the front fins are unfolded it suddenly becomes a backwards facing dart. Now I can get somewhat close to simulating this with my model but it really needs some help from the vectoring of the thrust. So it'll be interesting to see whether SpaceX can perform this rotation using only aerodynamic control of the fins 
or whether they'll need to use the gas thrusters to assist it. There goes my battery! <laughs> okay, the battery completely died just then. So there we have it, my radio controlled version of the SpaceX Starship. Now, obviously I couldn't replicate uh, the simulation that SpaceX showed of it entering the atmosphere and landing uh, due to various budgeting constraints. However, this model performed pretty well with the pivoting of the rear fins. It was a bit of a shame that I wasn't able to test the pivoting of the small front fins uh, because I reckon this could increase the control authority a bit and also assist with the final rotation just before landing. Now there is one other thing that I noticed with the design of these small fins on the actual SpaceX Starship and that is that the axis of which they pivot about isn't perfectly in line with the rear fins. They're actually angled slightly inwards which means that when these pivot up and down they ever so slightly change their angle of attack to the oncoming air. Now maybe this is a way that SpaceX are going to aerodynamically control the role of the Starship on entry or maybe even control the pitch of the Starship if it ever gets into a situation like mine did where it's facing directly into the oncoming air. Now whether SpaceX are going to stick to this fin design or move on from it I don't really know. However, I learned a lot from this project and I hope you guys did too. If you're wondering where I got this SpaceX Starship model from, it's uh, actually some files that I found on Thingiverse, I'll post a link to it in the description below, uh, so you can 3D print your own model SpaceX Starship. I'd like to say a huge thanks to 3D Prints for sponsoring the filament for this project. Uh, they gave me all the roles of PLA and PETG 3D printer filament uh, to make this project possible, and I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be appreciated if you could leave a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please click subscribe. And a huge, huge thanks to all of my Patreon supporters. You guys make these videos possible. And I honestly couldn't go through the effort to make such a project and such a video uh, for this subject. So huge, huge thanks to you guys. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next project. Goodbye.